Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Be Restored Worship Center. I meet you. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, it is truly an honor and a privilege to just be here today. This is the day truly that the Lord has made. And I don't know about you, but I made a decision to just rejoice and be glad in it through whatever I face today, whatever you've gone through today. I hope that your resolve is to just worship him and be glad in this day. He made this day. He already knew what was going to happen today, but he's kept us throughout this day. And we, he's brought us together one more time to just be um, together. Amen. To be together. Amen. Here at Be Restore Worship Center. Um, listen, if you could do me a favor, if you can like, comment, and share on tonight. Like, comment, and share on tonight as we um, engage in this teaching tonight. Um, if you also can do me a favor, you can go over to our YouTube page and subscribe there as well um, just to stay in the know. And then also, if you have not uh, downloaded the Be Restored Worship Center mobile app, we encourage you to go ahead and do that so you can stay connected uh, with us in ministry. Amen. We are just so thankful to God for what he's doing for Be Restored Worship Center. And I'm thankful to God for what he's doing in your life. Let's go to the throne of grace. God, we appreciate you. God, we're thankful unto you. God, we acknowledge you as Lord and Savior. You are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. You made us. You know everything about us. So, God, we don't hide anything from you. But, God, we pray that you would seek us, that you would search our hearts, and those things that are within us, that you will remove them out so that we can be totally committed and given unto you. God, forgive us of all of our sins, those things that we've done, the things that we've left undone. Forgive us, oh God, and cleanse us. God, give us a clean heart and renew the right spirit within us. God, it's our desire to please you in all of our ways. So forgive us of the times when we really were seeking to please our own way and not you. God, help us, strengthen us, encourage us. God, we pray that your spirit will be with us this day, that you will bring light to our path, that you will show us your way, you will show us your truth. God, we are thankful that you're causing us to be whole, that you're causing us to be healed, that you're causing us to fulfill our purpose in the earth. God, we're thankful for who you've created us to be. God, we're thankful for who you've anointed us to be. God, it is our desire to be like you in all that we say, in all that we do. We pray that as we live this life, that we will follow your example, we'll follow your word. God, we want to be willing and obedient. So God, whatever root of disobedience is in our life, remove it out so that we can be fully committed to you. God, we give you a yes. Yes to your will, yes to our way, past our flesh, past our own desires, past our shortcomings. We say yes to your will and yes to your way. God, we give you our lives. We give you our desires. We give you our plans tonight. God, strengthen us in every area where we're weak. God, heal us from discouragement. Heal us from brokenness. God, make us whole. God, it's our desire. We want to be whole tonight. Touch our eyes that we may see. Touch our ears that we can hear. Touch um, our physical bodies that we can walk this thing out and do that which you've committed to our hands. God, cause us to be prosperous in the works of our hands, that which we do for the kingdom. Cause it to prosper. God, we ask tonight that you would touch our families, touch our friends. God, we pray that you would even heal them, that you would deliver them, that you would save them from whatever they're dealing with whatever affliction, those things that they've expressed to us, those things that they have not expressed. We pray tonight that you would manifest your healing and deliverance for them, that they will walk in liberty. God, we're thankful for liberty tonight. We're thankful for freedom in our lives. We're thankful for liberty and freedom in the lives of our family and our friends, that we won't be bound by our past, 
We won't be bound by our sin. We won't be held captive to the thoughts and the opinions of others. God, you are the only opinion that matters. You are the only word that carries weight in our lives. God, we're, we ask that you would forgive us of the times that we've allowed other people's opinions and words to carry more weight than you. God, heal us and deliver us from the thoughts and the opinions and the words of people that we will always be confident and knowledgeable of who we are and what you've ordained us to do, who you've called us to be. So, God, even in those moments of doubt, give, forgive us of our doubt. Forgive us of, of the times we've doubted you. We've doubted what you said about us, that we uh, second-guessed our calling and our anointing and our gifting. God, forgive us and strengthen us to walk in boldness, not in arrogance, but in boldness in, in you of who you have ordained us and anointed us and called us to be. Everything that we are, you made us. What we do, God, you give us the strength and the power to carry it out. So, God, we're thankful that you're causing us to prosper in ministry, that you're causing us to be fruitful in the marketplace, that you're causing us to be a light and a blessing on our jobs. God, we're thankful for increase and promotion even on our jobs. God, we're thankful that we'll get the call, that we'll receive the letter, of promotion, of increase, even if we weren't in line for increase. God, do it for us now. And God, it's all for your glory. God, we're thankful for the contracts that we'll close, the, the deals that we'll sign. God, we're thankful for the real estate that you'll give us. God, we're thankful for everything that you're blessing our lives with for your glory. God, we're thankful for the things that we have placed before you as a ministry and as a church, that you'll fulfill the vision that you'll cause us to be able to do everything that you've placed inside us to do. God, we're thankful that we're growing in spirit, that we're growing in prayer, that we're growing in worship, that we're growing in people. God, we're thankful that you're filling the house with everything that is needed. God, we're thankful that we have to put out additional chairs to accommodate the people. God, we're thankful for even having to add an additional service to accommodate the push that will come into this house because we would choose to preach your word, that we would choose to worship you. God, we're thankful for every musician that will come to this house, every singer that will come to this house, that have a heart for worship, that have a heart to serve you, that it's not about a gig, that it's not about a check, but they really have a heart and a surrendered life to you and God, we're thankful for the creativity that rests on every musician, on every singer that will be in tune to you and will release the sound of the Lord that will be in tune to you and release in the spirit what you're saying through song. God, we're thankful for every media person in this ministry that as we grow, that our ministry in ministry uh, in media will grow and that you'll give us the resources and the tools and the people to do everything in excellence. God, we're thankful for those that are working now that as you're expanding their knowledge, you're expanding their hand, oh God. And as they do it, as they make the sacrifice, God, I'm thankful that you're prospering them. Them, that even in this, you're causing new opportunities to come open unto them for their sacrifice, for their time that they spend making sure that your word is going out to the world. God, we're thankful for every doorkeeper. God, we're thankful for every parking lot attendant. We're thankful for every deacon, every mother, every elder, every minister, every evangelist. God, we're thankful for the hospitality, hospitality committee. God, we're thankful for everybody in administration. God, we're thankful for the finance committee and the trustees board. God, we're thankful for everyone that is in the house. God, we would call those things that are not as though they were. God, we're thankful for every security person. Oh God, that you keep them vigilant and in prayer, oh God. God, we're thankful for 
those that are intercessors in the house. God, thank you for stirring up the intercessors in the house. God, we're thankful for those that will go out into the neighborhood and meet the need in the neighborhood. God, we're thankful for those that will go out into the community and pray for those that need prayer. God, we're thankful for those that will help to make sure that people have food to eat. God, we're thankful for everyone in education that is a part of this ministry so that young people everywhere can come here and get tutoring and get the help that they need to be successful and to prosper in school. God, we're thankful that you're causing us to prosper and be in health. God, we're thankful for technology, that you're giving us the know-how to use technology to spread your word, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, help us to use every aspect of in, that's in the world. God, help us to use uh, social media. Help us to use the internet. God, help us to use our mobile. Everything that you have placed before us, help us to be good stewards. Help us to be productive in that so that we can reach the world for you in the name of Jesus. God, we're thankful for everyone that's a part of this ministry that is doing international ministry that will go to the highways and the hedges and preach your word and be witnesses unto you. God, give them traveling mercy mercy and grace. Give them resources, oh God. Keep them safe, God, even as they go to other countries in the name of Jesus. We pray your divine protection, your divine will now in the name of Jesus. We pray that no hurt come nigh them, oh God, that you'll keep them safe, that you'll keep them safe in the airways, that as they're on the ground, oh God, that you'll block every hostile attack of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Every plot of the enemy on international soil be foiled in the name of Jesus, but you'll keep them from terrorism, oh God. You'll keep them from the enemy, the enemy that will bring terrorism both in the natural and the spirit, God. We pray tonight that every rebellious spirit, every spirit that is contrary to your will and your way be bowed now in the name of Jesus. That ministry will go forth internationally, God. God, we're thankful that you're calling us to the nations because you can trust us. God, touch now every person that's part of the international move and international ministry now. God, we're thankful that you're giving them the resources financially to do everything that they need to do, everything that you place inside them to do, to be a blessing now in the name of Jesus. God, we're thankful that you're causing us to be global in the name of Jesus. God, just as you've caused us to be global and international, God, help us to be local. God, help us to not get so big that we forget our neighbors, that we forget those that live across the street and on the side of us, those that are in the school down the street, oh God. But help us to be focused even locally and in our community and in our neighborhood. God, help us to be a light. Help us to not pass over the ones that we ride by and we walk past every single day. God, use us for your glory. Use us for your glory, oh God. God, we, we're not trying to get famous, God, but we just want to continue to make your name famous. God, we want to continue to give your name the glory and the honor in the name of Jesus. God, search our heart. God, help us to do everything that we do with the right intent. God, search our motives now in the name of Jesus. God, help us to always seek after you and check our own motives, check our own thought processes, and so that we can make sure that what we do, we're doing it for your glory, that it's not about us, but it's about you. God, you said that if you be lifted up, you would draw all men unto you. So, God, we're thankful that Be Restored Worship Center is a house that will lift you up. We'll lift you up in prayer. We'll lift you up in worship. We'll lift you up in praise, oh God. All that we do, we want you to get the glory now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Lord, that you're doing it for us. We're thankful that you are using us for your glory. God, we pray that you would meet every single need, every need be met. Heal us everywhere. Restore us everywhere. Strengthen us where we're tired. Some of us are tired 
in our physical body. Some of us are tired in our mind and our spirit. God, will we thank you now for the refreshing that we feel from your spirit. Send your refreshing now. Send your restoration now. Water us now. Help our dry bones to live. Breathe on our flesh now that we may live that we may testify of your goodness and your grace. This is your doing, and it's marvelous in our eyes. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. God bless you. Um, again, we're thankful uh, for you on tonight as we continue in our series as we're talking about this is our year to be, this is our season to be, this is our time to be. Uh, we're being everything that God created us to be, everything he's anointed us to be, he's appointed us to be, he's ordained us to be. We want to be that. Amen. Um, so tonight, I um, want to talk about be love. Be love. Be love. So, so important, so critical. Um, we're going to begin at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 through 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 through 3. It says, if I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love... For others growing out of God's love for me. Then I have become only as a noisy gong or a clinging symbol, just annoying, just an annoying distraction. Verse 2 says, If I have the gift of prophecy and speak a new message from God to the people and understand the mysteries and possess all knowledge. And if I have all sufficient faith so that I can remove mountains, but do not have love reaching out to others, I am nothing. If I give all my possessions to feed the poor, if I surrender my body to be burned, but do not have love, it does me no good at all. I'm reading that from the Amplified Version. It does me no good at all. I can do all these things. I can do all these works. I can have the spiritual. I can speak in tongues. I I, I can prophesy. I can preach. Have all this stuff going for me. I'm giving to the poor. I'm making sacrifices of myself. But if I don't do it in love, it means nothing. We have to be love. We have to show love in all that we do, even in those times of correction, even in those times of having to deal with situations, we have to do that which we do in love. God deals with us in love, even when he has to chasten us, even when he has to correct us, even when he has to get us in order, he does it in love. Sometimes we got to show tough love, but love, when love is in the message, when love is in the correction, People can receive it. Why? Because they know that you have their best interest in mind. They know that you love them. And what I'm telling you, what I'm showing you, what I'm giving you, I'm doing it in the spirit of love. It's not to condemn you. It's not to, uh, to throw shade on you. It's not to kick you while you're down. But I want to see you grow. I want to see you be everything that God has called you to be. I'm doing it in love. The, the, the love of God's inside of me. I've got to give you love. I've got to show you love. As believers, we got to do a better job of being love. We got to show forth his love in the earth. You know, we're, we're in a, a time of just this week where people have set aside and say, oh, this is a time of love. You have people that are making reservations at the most expensive restaurants. They may not spend that money no time of the year, but they don't mind spending a lot of money going out to eat. They'll make these grand gestures of love. There's people that are making preparation right now that before this week is over or before this weekend is is done, they're going to propose to the quote-unquote love of their life. They want to let the world know uh, that I love this person. Um, The the flower industry is going to make millions of dollars just this week of people who have made the decision, I'm going to send two dozen roses, I'm going to send three dozen roses, Uh, I'm going to make sure that I do something tangible to show this person that I love them. 
And then sometimes it's just out of a formality. It's something that's expected. Sometimes there's not even a heart involved in it. It's just, oh, this is Valentine's Day. This is a time of love. I got to make sure I do something. And then sometimes it's just to show off. You don't want your wife to be at work and then you don't send no flowers to her job or she come home and ain't nothing. You're going to find yourself in trouble if you do nothing. So we, 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 we do whatever it takes to show that we love because the world tells us this week is the week that we show love. And then on the flip side, we, there are some of us that don't want to have nothing to do with love. We don't want to see no flowers. We don't want to see no cu couple happy. We don't want to see all these lovey-dovey posts on our social media. If we be real, we are over it. Like, mm, I've been there, done that. I'm good. Because we have associated what we have gone through and the failed relationships or the hurt that we've experienced from others, we equate it to love. Listen, we have blamed some things on love that love had nothing to do with it. But we, we will say, well, I don't love because love don't love me back. And this person said they love me, but did they really love you? And sometimes we have found ourselves in situations expressing love to people and things when really we were operating out of lust and not love. We have got to search our motives and our intents, both in the natural and when it comes to things that we do in the kingdom of God. Because some of us are not doing things in love. We're doing it in the lust of position. We're doing it for the lust of accolades. We're doing it so people can pat us on our back and tell us how wonderful we are. We're really not doing it out of love. But we ought to have love for God and love for his people. We cannot be an effective ministry. We cannot be effective leaders and witnesses if we don't love the people of God. Listen, me loving you don't mean that I'm always going to agree with you. And we feel like because I love you, uh, then I always got to agree with you. No, it's okay. Sometimes we're not going to see eye to eye. Sometimes I'm going to be wrong. Sometimes you're going to be wrong. But guess what? We can deal with the wrong. We can acknowledge our wrong or the fact that we just don't see eye to eye with this, but we can keep on loving. I, got, I don't have to agree with everything to love you. I don't, have to, I don't have to be a yes person to love you. And sometimes we feel that the people around us, because they're always telling us yes, because they're always on our side, even in our foolishness, we equate it to love. No, if somebody loves you for real, they're going to tell you about yourself in love. They're going to try to keep you from making a fool out of yourself in love. Now, don't, don't, don't go over this house. Don't bust the windows out of this car. Don't, don't do that. Don't, get, don't be unseemly. But I need you to hold up your integrity. When people really love you, they don't want to see you making a fool out of yourself and doing things that will have people questioning whether or not you're really a Christian. Because you let your emotions take over. But listen, whatever, whatever I do, wherever I am, I have to make sure that I'm just not operating out of my gift, but I also got to make sure I'm operating out of love. I believe that we serve a God who deals with us in love. His motive is love. His intent toward us is love. He does it out of love. Even, I say it again, even in his correction. He corrects us out of love. Sometimes we have to get on our children. Sometimes we put them on punishment. Uh, sometimes we got to get after our nieces and nephews and tell them about themselves. But we do it because we love them because we don't want to see them hurt. We don't want to see them make bad decisions. We can see the path that they're going down. And when we talk to them, we talk to them because we love them and we want them to avoid certain pitfalls that we went through or certain pitfalls that we know that this path is going to lead this way. Listen, we have got to make sure that we do it in a spirit of love. I know I've had some situations in my life when people have dealt with me and I knew it was not out of love. 
And then what it will make you do, even though they're telling you the truth, you reject it. Because you know there's not love involved in it. You know they don't have your best interests in mind. They're, they're actually a, a, a relishing the fact that you messed up. They're, they're rejoicing in the fact that you're in a hard place. And even though they're telling you some good stuff, you know that the motive behind it is not love. We have to make sure that when we open our mouths, that what we do and what we say, there is love behind it. That there's, that there's good motive behind it. That when we talk to people, we talk to them because we want to see them blessed. Because we want to see them successful and prosper. I'm going to tell you this. Out of love. What have we blamed on love? That love had nothing to do with it. What are we holding on to now? That we feel like it was love for a situation, love for an organization, love for a person, and now we don't want to do it. We don't want to engage. We don't want to work in the church no more because we love the last church. We love the last pastor. We love the last organization. And because things did not happen the way we wanted to, we don't put our heart and our love behind what we do anymore. We'd rather come in, sit in the back pew, and leave right out. No love for ministry. No love for the things of God. Just operating. But in this season, then our time to be, we have got to make sure that we're doing what God called us to do and do it in love. The Bible lets us know what love is. If there's any question that within ourselves and how we do and how we operate, if there's any question about the people in our lives, whatever that relationship is, all we have to do is hold it up to the mirror of the Bible. You ain't got to go far. But right here, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 through 8, it says this. Love, and read for Amplified Version. Love endures with patience and serenity. Love is patient. It, it, it don't give up easily. It's not always aggravated, but it's patient and serenity. Love is kind and thoughtful. It's not jealous and envious. If somebody in your life is always jealous and envious of you and what God is doing in your life and the plan he has for you, you need to check whether or not they love you for real. If you are jealous and envious of people that you say you love, you need to check your heart and your motive toward them. But love is kind. I want the best for you. And it's thoughtful. Um, there's nothing like being in relationship with someone, like a, a parent or a family member or a romantic relationship with your spouse, and they are thoughtful. They, they know what you like, and they know how to identify it. And not only do they know what you like, but they'll go out of their way and just do certain things for you. They know you like a certain candy bar. They know you like a certain type of drink. And they say, listen, I was on the way home, and I had to stop to get some gas and I know you like this so I decided to just buy this for you and drop it off to you. I decided to bring this home for you. It's thoughtful in its gesture and how love operates. Love does not brag and is not proud or arrogant. That, that by itself is a whole message. Love doesn't brag about what I do. It's not proud. It's not arrogant. Arrogance and operating out of arrogance is not love. It's not rude. It is not self-seeking. Love is not rude. My God. H how many of you have ever witnessed people that say they're in love and then one person is just rude toward the other person, just no consideration, just talk down to them, you know, condescending all the time, but they're supposed to be in love. No, that's not love. If you're rude to me, all the, you don't love me. If you're rude to others, that is not love. The, some people try to talk to you, uh, and you're rude. You don't say hi. You don't acknowledge their presence. How can you say that you operate out of love and you're rude? 
But because I have the love of the Lord inside of me, I don't operate in rudeness. I'm not self-seeking. It's not self-seeking. Love does not just seek what it can give. Love always looks for the opportunity to give. Lust always seeks for what it can get from a person out of a situation, but love is always looking for the opportunity to give. That's that we, we, we check in love. We check in our motives. We check in the motives of things around us. It is not provoked, nor overly sensitive, and easily angered. <laughs> it's not easily provoked. Not overly sensitive when it's love. It does not take into account a wrong endured. When you operate out of love, you're not sitting there taking notes and say, well, uh, you remember in 1996, in January the 29th, you said X, Y, Z, or do you remember last year in November, uh, you did this to me and that hurt my feelings. We're not sitting there taking tallies of the wrong so that I can bring it back up to you out of frustration because now I'm provoked and I'm angry. Now I'm going to take into account. I've been keeping tallies of everything that you've done wrong. Listen, we've talked about it before. Sometimes you just got to forgive people and release it. Um, and if you hold on to uh, times when people have done you wrong or this person has done you wrong, what will happen is what's inside of you, what you have not released, what you have not forgiven them for, will come back up out of you at the right time, and then you find yourself going off on them with every account of wrong. Listen, um, sometimes, well, not sometimes, when you love a person, whatever the, whatever the nature of that relationship is, when there is wrong done, there's misunderstanding, there is a reasoning that we can come together, we can talk about it, we can talk through it. Why? Because I value the relationship we have and because I know that we operate in love, I don't want there to be this uh, unresolved issue among us, but we can come and talk together. We can reason together. Even if I've done you wrong or you've done me wrong, let's deal with this so we're not holding on to it, taking into this account. But let's find a way. Oh, come, let us reason together. That's what love says. Though, though, though your sin be scarred, what you did, yeah, it was great, but can we reason together? Can we sit down and talk about it? Because my love for you supersedes the wrong that happened. It supersedes the mistake that happened. It supersedes my perception that you did me wrong, and that was not uh, your intent. But it's, a, it's amazing how much can be resolved by a conversation. Why? Because I'm operating out of love. And my relationship with you means everything. Verse 6 says, it does not rejoice at injustice, but rejoices with the truth when right and truth prevail. It bothers me that even in the world, in our justice system, our political system, that people get happy over injustice, that, that relish uh, when people are marginalized, when people don't have equal opportunity under the law, when they don't have the same resource, and you're doing everything you can to oppress a people, and when you rejoice in that and you take joy in that, that's not love. And this is part of the issue that some people have with Christianity, is that there are those that profess Jesus Christ, but then they rejoice in injustice. They rejoice in people being oppressed. They rejoice in the killing of a certain type of people in the street. And you say, well, I, they ain't got nothing to do with me. They should have did X, Y, Z. Why would you rejoice in injustice? 
When you have love, when you have God inside of you, you ought to want to see truth prevail. You ought to want to see right happen. But rejoicing over injustice and people being done wrong, being talked about, you, you love to see gossip and mess. And the minute gossip and mess happens, you want to get off on, girl, did you see what happened? Uh, such and such, such and such didn't did this. Oh, yeah, well, I heard this. Just rejoicing in injustice. Sometimes we'll spread rumors faster than we'll spread the good news of the gospel. We'll spread the downfall and the mistakes of others quicker than we'll talk about the blessings of God. If you think about it, the people around you, how often do they call and tell you about good stuff that happened to somebody that you know? Or do they always call you when say, girl, did you know that such and such did this? Did you know pastor so-and-so, this happened over there? Did you know that this church was going through this? Did you know this person did X, Y, Z? Always calling you and rejoicing over wrong. It's like they get an excitement. They got to give you the tea. I don't, I don't want that tea. Keep your tea. I don't want it. Be careful what you allow into your space because it will affect the love inside of you. Now when you encounter that person or now when you see a similar situation, it will be that much more difficult to operate in a place of love because in the back of your mind, all you have is what people told you about them. And sometimes the information that you're getting ain't the truth. But people have their perceptions of people. They have their own issues with people, and then they want to uh, put their issues on you and have you side with them over a situation. And you don't even know this person. You ain't never had a conversation with this person. Operate in love. Verse 7 says, love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, Love never fails. It never fades or ends. Love never ends. We, we can bank on love. God's love for us will never end. What you do for him, what you do out of love will go on forever and ever. There have been people in your life that have loved you and shown you love. They may be gone to the grave, but the love that they had for you and the fact that they operated out of love, it sticks with you to this day. You, you know what it feels like to be loved by a family member or a friend or someone at the church that you grew up with because you felt love in everything that they did towards you. Their conversation was in love. Their pushing was in love. Their correction was in love. And you may, it may have been 40, 50 years ago, but you remember those people that were love, that displayed love to you. And some of us are where we are because we were loved the right way. We had some grandmamas and some church mothers and some deacons that loved us the right way in our youth that now we are walking in the place of being and we know how to be loved because we experienced love. Be loved. We got to be loved. And verse 8 says this, the second part. But as for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for the gift of special knowledge, it will pass away. What do you say? Everything that we do down here is going to end. Your, your prophesying, your, 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 your speaking in tongues, your, your gift of knowledge, everything that we do and we operate in, one day is going to end, but love is going to stand forever. His word is going to stand forever. The love of God, it, there is no end to his love. So whatever it is that you're doing, make sure you do it in love. If you don't have love, keep it. 
I, it does not matter how talented you are, keep your talent until you know how to operate in love. does not matter how accurate your prophecy is, until you know how to prophesy in love, keep it. Uh, does not matter how well you speak in tongues, keep your tongues if you're not going to speak in love. Whatever it is you do, make sure you do it in love. The world needs your love. There's, so, there's too much hate. There's too much uh, backbiting. There's too much other stuff going on. But as believers, if nothing else, they ought to experience the love of God through us. We have got to be loved. What does love look like? I will submit to you that love should look like you. Love should act like you. Why? Because I am love. I'm, I, I'm being love. Because I have the love of God inside of me, and because he operates in me, I have his spirit inside of me, that when people see me and they come into my presence and they have a conversation with me, they ought to feel love coming from me. So you got to look like love. You got to talk like love. You got to operate like love. You are an example of God's love in the earth. You are, not the next person, but you are an example. And whatever you do, do it in love. If you don't do it in love, it means nothing. It account, that's the Bible. It, says it, it don't mean nothing. It don't profit you nothing unless you do it in love. You are just a distracting noise. You're just tingling cymbals and sounding brass. You're making noise, but it's not producing that which it needs to produce because it's not done in love. That's Bible. I'm just talking Bible. God is love. And here's the thing. The Bible says that perfect love casts out all fear. So whatever's going on in a person's life because they experience the perfect love of God, Whatever has been hindering them, whatever they're bound by, love will cast it out. Love will drive it out. You want to drive out hate? You want to drive out fear? You want to drive the, Just start loving on folks. You want them to be delivered and set free? Start loving on them. Again, not accepting where they are. I, 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 I see better for you. I know there's more in you. So I'm going to keep showing you the love of God until this deliverance manifests on you, until this healing come on you, until you say, I'm going to love you. Uh, just imagine if God had left us in our state. He left us in our sin. Some of us were messed up. Some of us looked like sin. Some of us stuck like sin. But God still loved us. In the condition that we were in, and he did not leave us there, but while we were yet in sin, he commended his love toward us. While, it didn't say after, after we were cleaned up. It did not say after we came out of sin, but it says while we were in the condition that we're in, while we were deep in it, he still loved us and he gave us his love. Wow. And some of us don't want to love people because of the situation they're in now. We want to wait till after they saved, after they delivered, after they set free, after they made whole, after they're not on drugs, after they're not alcoholics. Then we want to love on them. No, love on them now. Be God. Be the love of God in the earth now where they are. Your love will make a difference in their life. Well, they can say, I, I, I've seen a lot of people talk about being Christians. I've seen people going to church, but I've never experienced somebody that would really love me right where I am. We got to be love, not talk about it. But we, every one of us, have to be love. We got to exude love. We got to look like it. We got to act like it. We got to talk like it. And I'm closing. 1 John 3 and 18 says this. 1 John 3 and 18. My little children, let us not 
love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Just don't talk about it. Don't just say you love somebody. Don't just say I'm a loving person. But the Bible, Jesus tells them, my little children, <laughs> you, you, you're mine. See, when he, my, my, my little children. He don't just call them little children. He says, my little children. You are my sons and daughters. So just as I'm willing to sacrifice for you, I need you to do the same thing. So don't just love in words. Just don't say it with words. Don't just write it down. Don't just uh, make empty promises. But it says, in deed and in truth. When you love someone, you operate in truth, and you'll back up what you say with love. That it's not empty promises. I, don't, I don't have time for empty promises. I don't have time for empty love. I don't have time for you giving me lip service. But I want you to love me for real just as I love you for real. Same thing with Jesus Christ. He wants us to love him for real, not just with our mouth, but with our actions. How do we love him? God, I'm going to follow your commandments. God, I'm going to love your people. I'm going to do what you call me to do. I'm going to pray. I'm going to read my word. I'm going to fast. I'm going to give. God, I'm going to do everything that I can do because I love you. I'm not doing it because I feel like you're going to strike me down. I'm not doing it out of obligation. I'm not doing it under compulsion. But there comes a time in your life that what you do, you do it because you love God. That everything I have, all my gifts, all my talents, my money, when I give my offering, when I give my tithe, I give it because I love you. I, I give you my praise because I love you. I, I'm going to church because I love you. Not because nobody had to force me. Not because I feel like it's an obligation. But because I love you, I do what I do in love. And I love your people. I get it. People sometimes can be hard to love. But the Bible says, listen, you got to love the hard one. You got to love your enemies. That's, that's where your true reward comes in. When you can love your enemies. That, that, that's hard. That, that's, that's, that's an area we really need the Holy Ghost. God, help me to love my enemy. Help me to love the one I know talk about me. Help me to love the one that tried to sabotage me. God, let me continue to show love. I'm not getting down to that level, but God, I'm going to keep loving them. That's the hard part of love. It's easy to love somebody that love you back. It's easy to love somebody. You know they got your best uh, intents in mind. They have the best intention. They want to see you do good. They want to see you prosper. It's hard to love a person you know don't like you and want to see you fail. But what good does it do to help and love the one that you get it back from? Your true blessing is coming from you loving the difficult. You loving the one that ain't going to love you back. They, 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 it's not reciprocal. And I understand we all want to experience reciprocity in love. Reciprocity, I believe, is key. It's important in our relationships. But sometimes, God's saying, listen, I want you to love, not expecting them to love you back. But I need you, just as men rejected me and I loved them, I want you to understand what it feels like and still love. God, what so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He so loved the world for a world that wasn't stunting him, for a world that had turned their back on him and still have turned their back on him. But he gave his life for all of us that whosoever believe on him, whoever want access to him can be saved because he already paid the price out of his love. Love sacrifices. Love gives. And we have to be loved. How will they know that you're a Christian? By the love that you have one for another. That's going to be the testament. That's going to be the proof that you love. Not that you could do a whole bunch of runs. Not that you built a big cathedral and it was filled with people. 
Not that you are a, a sensation on the internet with a million followers that every time you live stream, you got millions of people, that everybody knows your name, that you're driving a big car and a big house. The example and the testimony that you are with God and that you are his followers is going to be by your love. Am I in the book? They said, that's how they're going to know you're Christians. For real. By the love you have one for another. That's it. That's, that's how they're going to know. Prophesy all you want. Speak in tongues all you want. Preach all you want. Hold whatever revival you have. Release how many albums you want to re release. how many books you want to release. But if you don't do it in love, the Bible says it means nothing for you. Be love. That's, that's all I'm saying. Be love. And not just the hype of love. Love is more than flowers, fancy dinners, cards, romantic dates, trips, I, all that's wonderful, but love is more than that. Love endures when y'all getting on each other's nerves. And at times when you're like, he, he, he getting on my nerves, she getting on my nerves, but I love them. And my commitment to them is because I love them. And they're going to know I love them. Why? Because of who I am and what I continue to do. I'm not going to withhold my love because I'm upset and I'm angry right now. But I'm allowed the love of the Lord to really <laughs> work on me so that I can love at all times. God, we're thankful for your love. We're thankful that you loved us in our lowest state, that when nothing else could help, your love lifted us out of where we were, that you placed us on a firm foundation so, God, just as you have loved us and shown your love toward us, help us to love others. Help us to even love those that uh, don't mean us any good, those that have hurt us, those that have talked about us. It's difficult sometimes, but help us to be love and to show your love in all the earth, not just caught up in the hype, but help us to not just be love in word, but help us to be loved indeed and in what we do. God, we're thankful for Be Restored Worship Center, that we are a people and a house that operate in love, love for one another, love for your people, and love for you. God, we love you because you first loved us. And thank you for being the perfect example of love. So God, we're thankful that your love endures that your love is with us, that your, long, your love is long-suffering and kind to us. And help us to be love in the earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I pray that you were blessed by this word and challenged by this word. Listen, we got to be love. So in everything that we've been talking about that we're going to be, it has to be mixed with love. Love has to be an ingredient. It, it, it is an essential ingredient into what we do you know some there are certain ingredients you just got to have in something if you miss that one ingredient it make a difference you make that cake but if you're missing that one ingredient people are like mm, there's something missing have you ever ate something it's like something missing out of this it's the same way with love we can do everything but if love is missing people are like i mean it's good but there's something missing the word was good but something was missing the worship was good but something's missing uh, the church was good, and I like the people, but something's missing. We have to endeavor that every time people encounter us, even in Be Restored Worship Center, when people walk through those doors, they ought to feel the love of God from us. They ought to feel loved, regardless of what they look like, regardless of what we our perception is, that they feel love. Because sometimes that love that people feel in that moment is the very thing that will cause them to want to live. They're just looking for somebody that loves them. So let it not be said that we did not love for real. So I challenge you today to be love, not just walk it, not just talk about it, but be about it. 
And just as we've been talking, look for the opportunities to show the love of Jesus Christ wherever you are. Listen, we'll be uh, back here on Sunday at 1030 a.m. Every Sunday we're here at 1030 a.m. Uh, for in-person worship at 6576 Hill Street in the beautiful city of Lithia Springs. We're just west of Atlanta. So we uh, invite you to join us here in the sanctuary, 1030 a.m. every Sunday. And then we're here virtually um, on Wednesday nights at 7.30 p.m. for Life Empowerment Wednesday. You can catch us Facebook, uh, YouTube, Twitter, or um, on uh, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. Yeah, you can catch us there um, every uh, Wednesday and uh, every Sunday. But we definitely invite you to come be a part of us. If you want to experience a place of love, you look for a place to be loved and to show love, listen, come here to be Restored Worship Center. We are truly a place of love and a people of love for real. Amen. And we are so thankful to God for choosing us. Um, and as always, if you feel like if you want are led to sow into the ministry tonight, you can sow into the ministry. We'll have the, op- the ways to give here on the screen. But if you want to sow tonight, you say, I have an offering, I have tithes that I need to sow somewhere, um, you can do that on uh, tonight in this moment and so into the ministry. Amen. Listen, it is my prayer that this word blessed you. It is my prayer that as you go throughout the rest of this day, this evening, this week, that you experience the love that you need. And not only do you experience the love that you need, but that you be the answer of love in someone else's life. Go in peace and be loved. God bless you.